Are verses that tell us that only men should be pastors? You list a few. Consider law, gospel, or neither. Ooh, wrong question. Um, these verses are clearly commands that are, we are to follow and are a reflection of God's created order, but I also see how the practice of male-only pastors points to Christ's headship over the church and in that way could be considered a gospel. Yeah, yeah. The gospel is the restoration of the law fully and entirely in Christ. Yes, amen, it is done. So, I mean, I, I want to finish your question, but like, this is such, this is why Lutherans suck. I'm sorry, I, that's bad language, I know. No one likes that language. I'm vulgar sometimes, but I don't know how else to say it. This is why we're not heard, is we've gotten so blinded by the trees, we don't see our own forest. And so the question, is this verse law or gospel? Strike that question from your question book. Don't ask that. Ask, what does it say? It's huge. What does it say? Who cares if it's law or gospel? What does it say? You care if it's law or gospel when you're going to use it on a conscience. That's when you care about that. That's what that proper distinction is for. Who are you answering and when and how? But to, to regulate the texts of Scripture to a man-made, observed, observed, confessed restriction. You're, you're doing violence to the text before you, you get to it you're, by categorizing them. It's like, look, if I, if I have you all line up and I like cut out your hearts and put them next to each other, I can totally show you how your hearts work the same way. Problem is it does a little damage in the process, right? So when you take texts out of their context and you line them up, you can see how they tie up. And thankfully, you're not murdering people to do this. Look, these are all about male headship. These are all about the office of the ministry. Maybe there's something going on here. Maybe other male headship verses also connect to this. Maybe all authority is tied to Jesus the King. Yeah, it could be that. <laughs> you know, so, so you can see all of that, but you really need to put them back into their context and, and, and not say, are these law or gospel as a pack to begin with? That's a, just, just don't do that ever. Okay, um, and, and if you're making a list of gospel verses for you know, like to, to to write to yourself in the morning to make you feel better, that's fine. Do do that. That's that's a different thing than than trying to use the category as a category maker, right? So um, each of these verses is going to be about, frankly, a, quite a different thing. First Timothy three and F Titus one. I have to look at Titus 1. 1 Timothy 3 is a very different place than 1 Timothy 2. And the debate within the LCMS has been rather pedantic, frankly, uh, about this and whether or not this applies to women. Of course, it applies to women. What, does it apply to pastors? Of course, it applies to pastors. All these things apply. The law applies. Design applies. The fourth commandment applies. Uh, I'll, I'll say it differently. Everything we decided wasn't what the Bible says, even though we'd said it was the Bible says for 2,000 years that we've changed in the last 60 years. I'm for unsaying that part and saying it is what the Bible says, and then we can reassess after we get back to the other side. But the the jeopardy that this has put the church that I have to like be a pastor in into at this time is enough for me to say that I don't really care what you want to make as an argument about how we're misreading how all people are neither male nor female in Jesus. Like, look, the the results of this experiment are in. Modernism has destroyed us, and it's time to go back to believing the old ways, straight up. You want to get through it and believe in Jesus, you believe everything he said. It's not a question if these texts are about men and women or about pastors and their role. Now, to ask, is that good news or bad news, which is often the way the law or gospel question is asked, which is unfortunate because that's not what the distinction is about, but to ask, is it good news or bad news, is closer to where I think you're getting at, and that too is really going to depend on whether you're a believer or not, isn't it? Because a believer who hears, you shall not commit adultery, can hear that as a promise that is the most awesome. Like, I can't wait for the day when my heart is never tempted again. That day of resurrection, come Maranatha, Lord Jesus, right? And then I'll say it for all my temptations. But so, so that reality is still there. We are designed to work a certain way by God. And when he saves us in Jesus, he is risen. Let his name be praised. Alleluia. Come on, say it with me at some point. He is risen and that is complete and done. That's the gospel. Now we get to look at the law, not with the third use as if we get to have a different law. We just have a resurrected like heart. We, we desire to know what it says. As Pastor Kuhn said again earlier, we ask for wisdom. We seek it. We hunger for more Jesus. 
That is what he has risen does to us. And as we find his law, which even has a stand condemned according to its written code, should we be in the dock and have to have judgment passed? As we find that, we can rejoice even in its condemnation of ourselves. And in that way, if you want to talk about gospel meaning happy words, they're still happy words. So I think we've lost the distinction between law and gospel. I'm just going to surmise that right now. The proper distinction between law and gospel is a... Um, an extinct phenomenon. There's a lot of talk about it. We talk all the time about the proper distinction between law and gospel. And and in this way, and I'm not trying to hurt you, you're part of us here. We are part of us. But frankly, a proper distinction between law and gospel never talks about it unless it shows up in the text. And there's a couple texts where it does show up. And you're like, well, this is a place where it's showing you that the, the sword divides in two different ways. You could talk law and gospel from that. But to think that this is like most of what we just do every time we look at a Bible, a Bible text is ask, is it law, is it gospel? Then you're not listening to the text. Listen to the text. Listen to the text. And ask your pastor if your conscience is vexed by the text. And then your pastor's job is to alleviate your conscience by showing you that you stand in Christ, which is to show you how the gospel predominates, regardless of which letter happens to lean in what direction. 